uh, I think it's already been, yes, it's now in progress. Um, thank you, Agatha. Um, and we will record it and put it on the YouTube channel of the Open Access Books Network. Uh, and, but we also produce um, um, a written a PDF, a written interview with the, uh, the speakers uh, and collect it on Zenodo uh, within the Open Access uh, Books Network community on, on Zenodo. Uh, and just to have several occasions like this one, um, the interactive one, uh, oh yeah, and then people can can uh, look for the recording or uh, read further into the details of the project uh, in the Genodo uh, community. Um, uh, as said, this is part of the Open Access Books Network program, uh, an informal network, and uh, the website of this network is on the Humanities Commons uh, platform. Um, and uh, now there you can find um, a lot of information about um, our events we are organizing. Um, Jeff already uh, participated, I think, last year, Jeff, in a session uh, talking about your press, about your own uh, uh, full open access press. Um, but we also organize now uh, sessions like this. Um, uh, and um, starting this year, um, we organized a session of Voices of the Community uh, to talk about OA books policy, uh, also in relation to the work uh, that's being done within the context of uh, Plan S, the coalition as the funder uh, coalition. Um, so if you haven't joined this uh, network, please do uh, and become a member and you can uh, uh, yeah, um, co uh, have conversations about uh, open access books and all, this, all its aspects. Um, and then a thing I'd like to mention also, uh, because this relates very much to the, 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 the things we discuss here in this session, so we won't be uh, um, very much talking about the content of the book, but how it's being produced, written. Um, uh, so we have been talking in the previous sessions about, for instance, iterative writings, uh, open peer review, um, uh, uh, audiovisual and multimedia publications, uh, publishing software. Um, today we are moving into um, open educational resources, so a course uh, book. Um, and uh, but Jeff will go into this, I guess, uh, in in more detail. Um, open textbooks, or uh, in this case, an open uh, course book. Um, so today uh, it's more about educational, uh, the educational part of um, uh, getting an open access book uh, uh, live. Um, but what I'd like to mention is this Open Access Books Toolkit, um, which is a very practical uh, guide um, throughout the research life cycle, as you can see in the bottom of the screen. Um, several of these topics are uh, being uh, addressed within the Open Access Books Toolkit. Um, so the planning and funding, where to find fund, funds for, for Open Access Book Publishing, uh, but also the writing and submission phase. Um, of course, uh, uh, things about peer review, Contracting and licensing, I guess we will address this today as well, uh, uh, Jeff, because I think that's an important aspect of this, of your project uh, today. Um, so it's very helpful to, to, uh, to learn from, uh, from um, others uh, involved in the Open Access Books Toolkit. Um, yeah, just to mention that this is a helpful uh, instrument and tool. So, and now uh, moving to uh, today to the speaker, uh, Jeff Pulley. Um, and a full disclaimer, Jeff and I, uh, we know each other very well. We work together for, I think, three years now uh, on several things. Um, and and uh, two I want to highlight is the Open, Ex Open Access in Media Studies website, uh, which we started very um, energetic, uh, but then we moved into another uh, project, uh, which is Media Archive, it's a preprint server. Uh, Jeff and I co-founded this uh, preprint server, Media Archive, um, and our energy is now going into uh, that more than open access and media studies. Um, but you do many things um, uh, as a uh, media and communication scholar, um, writing a lot about uh, no, several topics in this area. But you recently also started your own, press, um, I think now two years ago almost, um, Media Studies Press. Um, and it's a full born OA, full OA uh, press, diamond. So uh, no AP APCs are charged uh, to authors. You are also a um, outspoken, uh, as I am as well, 
about um, the APC-based publishing, uh, which we see now on the rise, uh, which is very problematic. So, um, and you recently um, published this book, uh, Social Media and the Self. Uh, it's coming from your press. Um, yeah, and without further ado, uh, let's um, hear from you how how it's being done and how, how it um, I, uh, um, went through an idea uh, to, a, uh, to a final publication like we see on the screen here. So Jeff, the, the floor is yours. I will stop sharing and you okay. can take it over, uh, I think. Yeah, thank you so much, Aron. I'm gonna go ahead and share my own screen. And I just wanna thank you and the other organizers of the Open Access Books Network, which um, I absolutely treasure. I'm so excited to share not so much this particular open reader, but instead the idea of the open reader, um, which I think could be used in lots of ways. In fact, not just for kind of course reader uses, but even as overlay books, if you will. And that will make sense more in a second. But just to repeat something that your own said, I, um, this is part of mediastudies.press, which is a nonprofit scholar-led publisher of OA books. And what I'm gonna do is go ahead and drop into the chat, the URL to this open reader here in case you wanna take a look at it. Um, I'm going to go navigate to it myself. Um, and let me just um, say quickly what the uh, what this is. I mean, mainly what I'd like to do is just illustrate the idea of an open reader with the example of this social media and the self uh, publication or collection, uh, but merely as an example. And what it is in a way is that the, the idea of an open reader is meant to be a kind of update on the venerable course reader concept. Um, and I, I want to call out in particular the uh, publishing platform that this is created on, um, in part because some of its features are almost like tailor suited to this kind of uh, publication. And I'll show you why in a moment. But this is produced on as all of the HTML versions of the press's uh, books on PubPub which is relatively recent, constantly iterated, um, open source nonprofit uh, platform from that originated in a collaboration with the MIT Media Lab and the MIT Press, uh, but now is, is run by an independent nonprofit called the Knowledge Futures Group. Um, and so this open reader and any open reader that we produce going forward will be on this PubPub platform. And um, you'll see in a moment how it helps along this work. So um, one thing I, I will probably also drop into the chat here, but I won't go into more detail, is that if you are curious to learn more about the open reader concept, there is a preface here that's just devoted to that idea. And it goes into the history of the school book, as it was called, 250-year um, history of this sort of compilation anthology format aimed at uh, students, including uh, university students. And let me go ahead and drop that into the chat as well, the URL to this specific um, preface, but I won't otherwise um, refer to it. And instead, let me just navigate back to the, the main screen. So this is, you know, a, a reader that I've actually used in a course that I personally teach. Um, it is a compilation, basically, of found items, um, of pre-existing works that, uh, as I'll show you, either have open licenses or, or in the public domain, or I have permission to repost. Um, and there are a couple of other categories. But it is um, online only, um, and you know, it has a proper ISBN and DOI assigned. Uh, and You'll, see, you'll notice that there's this sort of theatrical motif and that's just specific to the topic, right? Um, and indeed the cover here references it as well, just the performance of self on social media is the, the topic of the, the reader in particular. Um, but um, at the risk of being a slight bit um, cheeky, I'm going to go ahead and show you um, the main points of this by creating and then publishing a pub that has the main components and even some of the challenges that I've faced. Um, so I'm going to title this brand new pub, The Open Reader. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and create a, a link to 
the anthology, um, just using PubPub here. This is PubPub's sort of back end. Um, and I'm just going to put the link in. And, um, and let me just explain what constitutes, at least as, as I've provisionally defined it, an open reader. Um, so let me get down here. And I'm going to list three major features of the open reader. First, it's sort of a collection of works that are available on the open web. That would be one piece of the definition. Um, second, and I'm very happy to take questions on any of this, that these pieces are selected and ordered with university courses in mind. Maybe I'll, I'll leave it there. I will add a third criteria in a moment. Um, but I wanted to note that the, the works themselves um, that are selected, they're either openly licensed, and in those cases, they're hosted on PubPub, or, and this is a big second category, they are um, copyrighted materials still available on the open web, but because I don't have permission to post them in full, they uh, in involve outbound links, as I'll show you in a second. And in fact, maybe this would be a good moment to just um, show you a couple of the various types. Um, so I'm going to jump back over to the reader itself um, and definitely raise your hand if you want to stop and ask a question along the way. But one type of publication that is included in here would be a public domain work. So here is, for example, uh, William James, the uh, famous uh, American psychologist slash philosopher whose um, 1892 book, Psychology, The Briefer Course, is excerpted here. There is a, um, in the pub a kind of somewhat lengthy excerpt from the work that is um, in the public domain, of course. One of the things I wanted to call out when I said that PubPub is sort of ideally suited for this is that it has this connections feature built in where you can, um, through a format, I guess I'll show you in a second, you can um, link up to another work. In this case, I've linked to the uh, version of the book, the best version on, on the internet archive, so that if someone were interested to download the full PDF of the enormous book, which is ironically the, uh, labeled a briefer course, um, they could do so. Um, but this is the basic way in which throughout the reader, um, we link to the original source. Um, it's taking a bit to navigate back. So I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, link on this, link back to the open reader again here. So to navigate back to the William James piece here, it has the text. Um, this is in the public domain. So PubPub, and apologies for the uh, very rapid scrolling here. I'm just trying to get to the bottom. Um, in each case, it will kind of list what type of, of work this is and will include um, the public domain listing, another link, and some uh, citation information. Um, and note that PubPub itself has kind of public domain and other kinds of um, actual kind of Creative Commons licensing stitched in. PubPub also allows you to create DOIs and to mint them directly from our own. Um, Crossref account. But in any event, that is the first type. It's the public domain work. Uh, so I think that probably is self-explanatory. But of course, for a class that's on social media, um, we can't work with materials that are from 1925 and earlier to use the US public domain designation. So a second kind of publication would be an open access scholarly article. And here's an example of one of those. Um, and here again, you see that the connection is made. And this is, you can always um, open up to see the full citation. It's to an open access um, journal called Social Media and Society. And here uh, the actual article is reprinted in PubPub, including citations, footnotes, etc. And again, uh, the copyright is maintained and designated here. So in this second type, um, the article is reprinted in full. So I would just say OA scholarly article for that kind. 
So you're still with me, I'm presuming. Um, a third type, um, I mean, this might be a little bit more particular to the kinds of media studies topics that are so contemporary that the scholarship lags behind the actual developments on the ground, particularly around social media. You know, TikTok, for example, is not represented well in the scholarly literature. So um, the, the reader includes articles that are on the uh, open web, but aren't necessarily peer reviewed journal articles. And in some cases, um, this is the third category, though the article is on the open web and it's copyrighted, I've obtained permission to republish it in full. Um, for example, this article is from a, a really excellent publication called Real Life um, and is um, copyrighted, but I have permission to re reprint it. But it also is available on the open web with no restriction whatsoever. So that, and so people could, you know, follow that link. I would call this reprint with permission. A fourth type, and I only have five, so don't worry. Um, a fourth type would be, let's see, an article that is fully available with free access on the open web, um, but which I don't have permission to include in full. So here's an excellent piece by Gia Tolentino, who's a, a terrific writer for The New Yorker. Uh, and I don't have permission to republish it. So what I do instead is create the first couple of paragraphs um, with a badge to uh, continue reading again. And in this case, the designation is that it's an outbound link, right? Um, and it's free access in the sense that if you were to follow that outbound link through any of these um, ways of, of getting out to it, you would be able to then read the article, print it out, however you like, um, without restriction. Uh, so in that fourth case, that would be, you know, an outbound link. And then the final case, which I have the most, um, I don't know, ambiguity in around how I feel about it, is an outbound link to something that is technically available on the open web, copyrighted as well, but which is um, regulated by a metered paywall. So, you know, the example one I could give you, I guess even another Tolentino article appearing in the New Yorker would be this really terrific piece called The Age of Instagram Face. It's excellent. So it looks very similar. There's a connection here with the citation, a uh, couple of paragraphs, but you'll notice that it says metered paywall. And in the case of this article, as with many other sites, um, they provide some kind of almost like a heroin dose or something, a few articles free. Um, and after that, you're requested to um, subscribe. And, you know, if you have students who are liable to go onto this site already, or if you assign too many um, readings from that same uh, publication, then you can easily hit that paywall. So it's a, a potential limitation um, and one that I'm still grappling with. So I would say this is an outbound link, but metered with a metered paywall. Okay, so those are the five types with the um, fifth one somewhat provisional. And sorry, let me just uh, remove, uh, let me erase what I've just done there. Uh, and uh, I wanna add a third feature that again, I think PubPub is in particular really terrific at allowing, which is versioning. I mean, in particular for mediastudies.press, where at least for the kind of contemporary facing open readers, um, the reality that's being described and analyzed is moving fast. Um, so the idea with any work that's in this open reader series would be that they are, and that the editor, curator, um, it commits to updating the reader every six months for three years. And in fact, as Yaron mentioned, this one was published in July, and uh, I am in the midst of updating the open reader social media in the self um, for this winter, and it'll be the first major revision. Uh, it just so happens that if you, again, look at um, PubPub, it sort of is built with um, versioning in mind. It has this concept it's somewhat I don't know, borrowed from, you could say, the software world, which is a, an analogy I'm not perfectly 
pleased with, but nevertheless, it's quite amazing in the sense that you can, if even if you're working on an individual work, you can iterate on that work by going to a draft. Um, there's a draft, there's a history of each published version that anyone who visits a publication can navigate back to. And if you make changes to an article, you can then publish a new release. And there's even a kind of um, ability to, uh, as with um, software, you know, kind of designate what the update was. Um, and so versioning is something that's sort of, um, I think, in the DNA of PubPub as it is and is helpful, therefore, for this open reader concept. And I do see that a question um, got popped in from Judith in the chat, slightly off topic, but a piece on the phenomenon of Munchausen by internet would go graded here. Oh, yeah, I, I would love to, you know, uh, Judith, if you would drop that into the, the chat, I would be thrilled to um, hear about that. Um, uh, if you if you know of any good such pieces, um, because absolutely, I'm in the midst of revision at the moment. So I would just cl close with this piece anyway, because I want to make sure that we have time for questions, just with a couple of the challenges. Um, and, you know, one of them I've already mentioned, which is the, the fact of outbound links with metered paywalls. So I think, you know, I'm not sure that that's sustainable. Um, there is, of course, you know, something like um, a problem that lots of online resources, but in particular in this universe um, of link rot, um, that you know some of the, the links can go bad. Um, a third issue I would say, and I'm happy to chat about any more of these, is the kind of question of annotation. Um, you know, it's PubPub is integrated with or at least supports hypothesis, which people might know is that kind of open source layer on top of websites. It also has its own commenting system. So if I were to, for example, um, let me just reload this page here. You can comment on um, individual lines of a pub or even add your own comment at the bottom, start a discussion, and it, it supports threaded comments. Um, but uh, it's not particularly suitable for classroom use, and depending on how you de define that, and partly because those comments are all um, public, and um, which is you know virtue for sure. Um, the other thing that I would add, and it's a sort of I suppose fourth challenge of its own, um, is that students are wedded to the PDF in many cases, ironically, especially as to their um, annotation practices. In fact, many of them like to print PDFs, um, interestingly, which is totally okay. And PubPub doesn't surface very easily. It's, you know, various forms of, of downloading, though they're quite powerful. Um, so you can download a PDF, for example, of any um, individual pub, and it will sort of auto-generate the metadata and provide a nice clean version of that sort. But nevertheless, you know, they, they sometimes have trouble kind of figuring that out. Um, and I don't know, it just requires some coaching along those lines. So I will um, go ahead, excuse me, and stop there. Um, actually, though, if you won't mind, I will go ahead and, as promised, um, publish this pub and then drop that into the uh, chat itself. Um, so I'll just put any questions here. Uh, you can email. So this will be part of the of the second version of the of the reader. <laughs> yeah, you know, well, in fact, I'll show you. Um, so I'm just going to link my email address here. And uh, and I will go ahead and actually demonstrate that connection feature because I mentioned that if you wanted to read more about it, you could go and look at that preface. So I'm going to go into the back end and without spending any time describing how it works, I'm going to this connections pane here. And instead of doing an outbound connection, I'm doing a connection inbound to the open, uh, the, let's see, the preface of the open reader. And you'll note that the interface allows you to kind of designate in a way that's really quite great because it gets registered with um, Crossref as part of the DOI. Um, but I'm gonna call this a comment on, and right now it says it's a comment on this pub, which I think, 
this pub is a comment on. That's what I'd like. And I'm going to go ahead and add that connection. And now if I go to the pub, which is the one we're just creating right now, you'll see that this is here. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to go ahead and publish it. Here's the interface that I said is kind of evocative of software where it asks you to kind of do a release note. So I'll call this initial release. Uh, and I will go ahead and create it. And now if I can go to that latest release, this is now on the open web itself. Um, in fact, if I were to go to the preface here, that connection should be registered at the bottom. Yeah, so the, it, it'll say that there's a connection here. Maybe the very last thing I'll say um, is just to read these last two lines from the preface. Um, it's fitting that the original schoolbook readers emerged in England at least after perpetual copyright was snuffed out by the House of Lords in 1774. That decision established what we now call the public domain and gave reign to anthologized reproduction. So the open reader in a way is a return to the form's roots. Um, okay, so I will stop there and I'm happy to share the screen again, but for the virtue of, of having a conversation, I'm gonna um, remove the screen there. And I'm happy to take questions of any kind. Yeah, thank you, Jeff. And um, uh, no apologies uh, regarding the the time you've uh, you've been using. So because I, I really like uh, the practical. So you you build up your 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 presentation using the system. So that that's a really oh. nice nice uh, nice approach. Um, and um, a, a few um, and, and maybe you you can put up the screen um, uh, again. Um, uh, because one category, um, I think it was the fourth one. Um, oh, sure. Okay. I can, let me see. Um, I'm happy to put that back on the screen uh, if you like. Let me just go ahead and reshare. Yeah, because I, I, have, I have two questions for, uh, and one is a clarification. So the fourth one uh, you mentioned uh, at the versioning part. Um, uh, so the article can either be openly licensed uh, or outbound links to accessible web um, oh yeah, to the accessible web resource, I think. So the fourth one is outbound yeah. link, and you showed an example. I think uh, this can be considered as as bronze open access, right? So it's available, but without the proper licensing information, is it? Yes, exactly. Um, that that is to say, so that example, and there are a couple of others that I I use too. Um, does not bear a Creative Commons license that, for example, grants explicit permission to yeah. reprint either with no derivatives or whatever. And uh, so the practice there is, is to just um, approach give the, the, link to the free access version. Yeah. Yeah. Or either the, uh, um, um, because that relates to my uh, second question. That's more like the technical uh, side of it. Um, so you're now writing. Um, for instance, um, how does it work? Um, because some articles can be very long. Is it just a copy paste or can you use, if there is an XML, can you import um, XML or, and how about the older versions? So for instance, this one on uh, the, the hundred years ago, uh, how, do, how, how did it work? Okay, well, there are yeah, two good questions and two separate ones. So I will just, I won't actually create this pub, but just to show you the interface on PubPub, it does have a really robust, and you know, especially as they've improved it over time, importing function. So if you select to import, you can uh, even import an entire directory of, of things um, okay. that you can go to your file system and navigate and import uh, anything like Word. Um, yeah. Uh, so Markdown. The, the, the common, the two the common that, extensions. Yeah. Yeah, those are the two that I typically use. So take the case of an open access article that is published in PDF form, but recently. So it's not like it's OCR'd and has a crappy text layer on top, but instead um, was generated from text. Um, there I will use Adobe Acrobat Pro, but you can use other softwares to convert the file to Word, the PDF file. And it actually, I do have a, a couple of, scripts that I've written that that help with footnotes in particular, which are um, a little bit difficult to navigate, but but basically the Word document is remarkably intact in mm -hmm. PubPub when you import it. And it requires some checking around, you know, paragraph returns and, you know, so again, like the, the uh, citations 
need some cleaning up occasionally, but it really isn't very difficult. Far more challenging, and you alluded to this, is when there's an old PDF that has um, oh, the uh, image, been right? OCR'd yeah. after the fact, and maybe the copy itself mm -hmm. is pretty poor. And in that case, it's the same basic process um, to convert to a Word document um, and upload it, but it, uh, in, it depends. I mean, if it's really quite bad, I might uh, actually convert it to a text document and um, work in Markdown that, that, um, that text-based kind of HTML software and, and make corrections in a text editor and, and then upload that Markdown file. And so, so it's not as easy. I mean, of course, if it's a web-based article, like the couple that I've shown that are, are used with permission, that's the simplest, right? Where you can just copy yep. the HTML and it's essentially dropped right in and read as rich text by PubPub and requires almost no change. So I hope that begins it. Basically it's, it's taking a PDF, converting it into Word or text document and then importing it. Import it, yeah. Yeah, I think uh, that because we have a few questions in the, in the chat and um, the first one relates to this um what we've been talking about um so thanks so much for this talk this is by chris barnes uh question how does pop-up handle copy editing does it have spell check or are there any plugins uh, plugins perhaps for this yeah it's, it's a great question it and the answer is that currently it has no um spell check built in so we absolutely use copy editors especially for original um works um, but even proofing for those that are reproduced and the uh, practice of copy editors depends some of that we use two and one of them will just use the commenting system that's built in on the draft side of PubPub. those comments won't carry over to the published version and she will make changes um, and then make suggestions to the author or to the editor using the commenting system the other frequent approach is to download a word version and it's a bit of a round tripping but but the copy editor will work with the word version with the author and it will be the corrections and so on will be tracked and re-added in it's not ideal for sure um, and i will say that pubpub is being kind of constantly iterated uh, one of its uh, core features, if it is a feature, is just that it's run by excellent people um, that are committed. They have an actual, you know, sustainable business model, which is not creepy or evil. Um, and they have a public roadmap of the features that they're building in. In fact, the next major feature set is a proper submission portal um, where, you know, for journals like one that we publish, but you could use it for a book publisher too, where there is submission, um, there's like a, a submission and review workflow. And I could talk a little bit more about the early prototypes I've seen on that front, um, but I'm getting a little far afield. There's no spell check, Chris, um, and there's no plugin architecture. I mean, for better or worse, PubPub, though it's open source, is a hosted solution. Um, so you, that is to say, you, you don't self-host, you host with them. And, um, you know, I'll just quickly, show the they have a, I think their, their values are in the right place and they actually also write about and uh, scholarly communications topics um, and copeam and other um, major projects that are in our world um, are hosted there but for pricing for independent grassroots communities they call you know kind of um, a single installation a community they have a pay as you want feature um, and it goes from there. So their their values are are pretty well aligned, um, and they're explicitly invested in nonprofit infrastructure. Yep. Um, yeah, it's it's a really interesting question, Chris, about OJS or Janeway versus PubPub. When you're thinking of of journals, um, we did go with PubPub, but there are trade offs that I'd be happy to talk about in the journal world. Um, certainly, you don't need to be technically proficient, which is quite nice. All right. Um, um, yeah, looking at the time, shall we? Uh, so we have two questions. I think we can um, squeeze them in uh, into one. Uh, oh, sure. Sorry. Yeah, the reception of the of the book. So Agatha is asking Jeff, do you already have an experience using open readers with students? Uh, yeah. What is their take on it, and are they happy to use it? And and Tom is asking, have fellow colleagues expressed interest in the open reader for their own teaching purposes, perhaps? So from the student side, the users. 
and uh, but also the the colleagues um, around the world. Uh, what are the comments? Yeah, it's, a, it's uh, well, I'll tell you that this I have used this now for two semesters in a course by the same name called Social Media in the Self, and the students um, do seem to appreciate it very much. Um, they appreciate, of course, the fact that it is an open. Well, let's just say that they appreciate the free nature of it um, in part, but they also have like been able to use it. I, I mentioned a couple of those small challenges around annotation and PDF downloads and so on, but saving for those, they have taken up the um, practice of using the reader really well. Um, in fact, I think I dedicated this to them uh, you know, at the bottom that they, um, by decades worth of undergraduate students and, um, in, at Muhlenberg College. So uh, um, it, the students have, have really liked it quite a lot. Um, it's also true that I've heard from colleagues speaking of Tom's question that are using it as well. People have sent me a couple of emails. They're either using in two cases, the entire reader or in many, many other cases, um, pieces of it. And I'll just add that I keep getting notes from people who are just hitting the individual pieces um, and using them for their own purposes. Um, and the kind of metrics that PubPub builds in, which are really privacy respecting, bore this out that, that this reader by far gets the most traffic of any of the books that we have published so far. It is um, by a magnitude of, of a number of, of, and that's true of downloads, of visits and so on. Um, uh, there is a open reader series and I have, you know, hoped that and, have encouraged and reached out to a couple of people to you know suggest that they create curate their own version of this and you'll note that there is a, a form where one can express an interest but the hope is that this would expand into other topical areas inside the kind of media studies universe um, so i hope that begins to uh, answer both of those questions um and uh, so during the, the, the talk, you know, your, also your explanation, and um, especially looking into these differences in, in licensing uh, of licensed material, um, more like a, so during the selection of what you uh, like to add to the collection, um, and you are depending on that it's freely available and it's open, and it's, that it's preferably open licensed, et cetera, et cetera. How, how is this dependency if, so, um, and there's, there's also a lot of work, uh, obviously, behind paywalls, or you need to pay a lot for uh, the copyright, etc., uh, etc. Cetera, et cetera. So um, how did it influence your, your decision to make this list? Uh, and, and yeah, so was that complicated sometimes? Well, you know, it, I, I think one strand of that question is a, is a really um, interesting one, because the question one could ask is, you know, could you be sacrificing too much by yep. restricting yourself to those materials that are either openly licensed, public domain, or et cetera, and yes. thereby like foregoing so much of the materials that sadly are behind a paywall? And, um, you know, I absolutely thought of it, and I had to be creative about some of the works that I really desperately wanted to make sure were in this, um, mm -hmm. and it required for example, searching out um, versions of articles that are on institutional repositories rather than, mm -hmm. like to take this example, rather than the published version. Um, and, you know, so, so here, this is an abridgment of the unpublished manuscript that, um, uh, uh, so it's a kind of creative smuggling in, you could say, of something yep. that in its polished form. Um, and and in, in one case, it's so crucial to the uh, to the way I teach this course. Um, I paid the Johns Hopkins University Press, which happened to own the copyright on this piece, a modest fee to have the rights to republish it. But the the answer is, in the end, I actually found it a feature, not a bug, to be restricted to the stuff that's open because there's such a fire hose of published material of all kinds, whether it's student oriented or aimed at academics or the public that it was actually kind of a comfort in a way to restrict myself to those works which I could include. And it made, it was a kind of filtering criteria that criterion that, that actually 
I don't know, it's hard to describe it, but made it feel more feasible as a task um, rather than a kind of blank slate, anything goes reader where you could um, uh, you, you know, use copyrighted materials at will. So um, is that basically the question you had, your own? I mean- um, I, Yes, yep, <laughs> thanks. I think it um, might be much harder in some fields um, that don't yeah. have open access publishing as a norm and that don't have lots of kind of public facing works that are available on the free web um, that are relevant. So, mm -hmm. oh, and then Sarah, it's so good to see that Sarah's here, um, who's uh, on the advisory board of, of Media Studies Tech Press, but she makes a plug for open access button. Absolutely. Yep. Um, yep. That, yep. that is, in fact, how I discovered this version of the, this article on the, on the history of authenticity. Um, and she mentions to share your paper, which is from the same people. And yep. uh, yeah, um, so I, I completely endorse that, that suggestion or pair of suggestions. Yep. Thanks. Thanks for answering. So um, uh, any last questions from the people in the call? Um, I see a festive um, icon. <laughs> So if there aren't any questions, um, uh, looking at the time, uh, Jeff, I want to thank you um, for um, getting us through the, the, um, uh, the book project. Um, and I really liked your, your approach in uh, the, um, oh yeah, doing it uh, on screen, uh, the how-to, uh, and that's really, really, really nice. And I, I, uh, that's also uh, part of the, of the of the session's approach, of course. So uh, very, um, uh, uh, that's great. Um, thank you. And with that being said, thanks also to the participants and the questions. Um, and I guess we can continue the conversation via Twitter. Uh, and also we will prepare a written interview uh, and then we can bring in some more links and resources, of course, an explanation. Um, so with that being said, um, that will, now, yeah, we will uh, get to it uh, in the next few weeks. Uh, we have some time now, at least I am, um, with the lockdown in the Netherlands. Um, so uh, with that being said, thank you for your time and I um, uh, hope to see you soon. And the last one of the session, of this session, uh, the OA Books uh, Workout Sessions will be in uh, January. I think it is the 14th of January uh, from the back of my head, but uh, it is on the Humanities Co uh, Commons website. Um, so thank you. and. Um, Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.